This video is about scripts that should be changed if you are going to implement sounds into FreeShooter template by Infima Games for Unity. First I want to describe an interesting concept in how sound is implemented in this project and then I show how to change it using Unity Audio or WIs. Developers of this project made a special audio manager using a guide you can find by the link below the video. Basically, this is a system where every script in a project has access to a list of unique interfaces. In our case, sound interface. If you don't know what the interface is, I'll leave a link below. But put it simply, I'd like to see an interface like a power button of a computer. You press it and the computer starts. Bottom is interface that sends a signal to some system. You could pass some information like fingerprints, for example, but it's still a button. Using interfaces is common practice for programmers. In this case, I guess the main idea is to avoid directly referencing a class that is responsible for playing sounds and accidentally doubling it. I need to say that in this project, for some reason, this interface is used only for playing weapon-related sounds. So how it's organized? The project has two public static classes, Bootstrapper and Service Locator. Public static means that they are accessible throughout the whole project. Bootstrapper spawns game object on a scene, called it Sound Manager, and attach Audio Manager Service script to it. Then it gets I Audio Manager Service interface from the game object and register it in Service Locator. Register means adding reference of interface called iGameService to the dictionary in Service Locator. If you probably know, a dictionary should have a unique key related to an object, and this prevents adding the same interface one more time. And this means that even there would be the same object in the scene, it won't work. iAudio Manager Service inherited from iGameService and has two functions. Play one shot and play one shot delayed, which takes as argument audio clip and audio settings. Audio settings is a struct that has information on volume, spatial blend, and bool, which indicate if audio source would be destroyed after playing. So to play the sound, we need to get reference to interface registered by service locator, and then we can call method from audio manager service. Audio Manager Service implements Audio Manager Service interface and uh, has all logic to play audio clips. So how a weapon sounds is played. It's a bit tricky. Audio Manager receives a signal to play not from a weapon or input system, but from character animator. Scripts that received this signal derived from state machine behavior and used a method on state enter. The, these are two scripts which attach to animator state. Play sound character behavior that hasn't serialized audio clip variable and it takes it from weapon and muzzle scripts. And play sound behavior that has serialized feel for audio clip. Before I start changing things, there is one more thing. Character, weapon and muzzle scripts are derived from character behavior, weapon behavior, and muzzle behavior classes, which are abstract. And the problem with this is that if you are going to change something in a muzzle script, for example, we need to fix all related references and abstract too. So how we can do this? For good sound design, we need at least ability to have randomizing sound containers and the ability to mix few sounds to play together. If for some reason we need to stick to Unity Audio, first, it's good to have a struct that would have an audio clip array and audio settings. In audio settings, I would make some changes, adding delay and mixer group variables. Now I can make a list of the structs and make Unity play a few sounds together and randomize them. Second, I added new function to interface audio manager service that will play a list of structs. The same thing is made in audio manager service. The function sends a random audio clip 
from a list to play it uh, with settings attached to this clip. Third, I think it would be better to put all sounds related to specific weapon into a scriptable object. It would be good to have all weapon sounds in one script instead of reading them from different places. So let's make this object. I changed weapons in muzzle scripts and uh, took out all audio clip references and put a reference to a scriptable object. And I changed also return class of functions to a list of structs. I need to change switch statement in play sound character behavior script to get my struct instead of audio clip and change names of the functions. Also change the same thing in the plain function. So now I can have a scriptable object of each weapon and only one slot for it in the weapon script. And it's possible to make more complicated sounds. The only question now how to optimize performance of the system but I think if there will be some response to this video, I would do another one about optimization. I guess it's good example of optimization is in the Creative Kit Unity project, and it could be used here as well. Or maybe it's good to use the object pooling system, which now included into Unity Build. Sure, using middleware give us more possibilities to organize sounds and optimize project in easier way. Let's try make all this stuff in wise. So first I'm going to change the audio manager server script to post wise events instead of playing audio clips. And we should proceed with changing all dependencies and it will be in all the scripts. We should make wise project and make events like holster, unholster, reload, reload empty, fire and fire empty. And make some sound design. <laughs> and then add events to script. So let's check it. The same thing can be done with F mode. I hope you learn a few things about how to implement sounds in more complicated projects compared to tutorial ones and it will help you with your journey as sound designers.